There are also accelerator buttons on the lower right that make it easy to edit events and view the events, this type of a thing. But what we're going to do is just hit OK and use these settings. We note we're using a simulation. Run the next session. Go. The simulation is running. And we hear the sounds. Now, when you use the event wizard, there's a variety of display panels which are newly available and are helpful. On the upper left here, we're using the panel which is called text stats. And text stats is textual statistics. We're also using the panel called Event Trends. These are sufficient to show us what's happening uh, in this protocol. The first thing we see in the text stats is the first eight components are shown. The names are given. The bandwidths are shown. The grand averages are shown, which are the same grand averages which would appear on the summary screen later. Damped averages are shown, which are damped down to be slightly slower moving. The grand averages are for the entire session. The damped averages are for approximately the last 30 seconds. We see the percent energy for each component, again as a convenient um, value. And then beneath it we see our events. And in this case we see that there's one event being looked at. The value A, which is the antecedent, is called channel one user amplitude. So it's telling us what we're looking at. The rule is less than. And the value B being used is this quantity 10.5 that we typed in. After that we see then, which is the event, and the event is that there will be a tone as we chose. We then see the current value of the component. This is refreshed every two seconds. And we see that it's varying as the component goes up and down. Value B is also shown, and that of course is 10.5 because it's been left fixed. And we see the percent time that this event is true. So we have a summary in one line of this entire protocol. And if we look to the right, this is the event trend window. The event trend window is giving us a pair of values. One is this white line, which is oscillating up and down. This is the value of the user component. And it goes up and down in time. And Within it, we see a green line positioned at the location 10.5. So that becomes the threshold. So we have a trend line of the trained component. We see its threshold. And we even see the threshold value given in text here. And whenever the value goes below threshold, we're hearing a tone. So this is an example of a very simple squash protocol designed using a single event. Now it's quite easy to make changes in the protocol. We'll show going back into the event wizard, for example. And suppose we want to see that component changing less rapidly. We noticed that it was quite responsive. Well, if we go to the damping factor, the damping factor gives us the time constant of the variability. And we're going to go back over the zero and we're going to change it to 10. This is, means the damping factor is associated with approximately 10 seconds. And uh, then at the same time we'll go down to the entered value and let's say instead of 10.5 we want a value of 9. So we simply do that. We hit OK as before use these settings, run the next session, go. And now we observe that the variability in the signal has been reduced. It's much more steady. It's more stable. And at the same time, we've lowered the threshold to 9. So that's an example of how straightforward it is to make simple changes in the built-in protocols. Uh, depending on your needs. 
Okay, we're now going to review some of the built-in protocols that come with 2.5 and we're going to use them in order to uh, demonstrate the capabilities of the event wizard. As you recall, when we go into read or write a settings file in 2.5 SE, we have a large number of new selections. Let's demonstrate, for example, alpha amplitude with dynamic thresholding. We'll read in settings from this file, press OK, and then we'll immediately go into the event wizard. What we see now is that for this protocol, the event wizard has saying, for the if condition, the antecedent, use an equation. And if we go down and look at the equation, it says x equals a minus 2.0. Well, a means alpha in the event wizard protocol uh, equation designer. This is information you can get when you look at the data dictionary. Uh, if you go down to the lower right of the screen, you'll find a button called data dictionary. This tells you how to access variables for the equation processor. I'm going to press data dictionary and now we see coming up on the screen uh, we allow that to display and coming up in Adobe is the data dictionary. What's contained in this data dictionary are definitions of all the Brain Matter 2.5 event wizard variables. This is a good thing to print out and refer to. When you look down lower in the data dictionary, one of the first things we see is, and I'll enlarge this, for the user defined bands, we see we're allowed to use simple letters. D, T, A, L, B, H, G, and U will automatically access the amplitudes of those respective variables. This is the tip of the iceberg and the beginning of the ability to use equations in the event wizard. The data dictionary goes on to include a wide variety of variables, including amplitudes, frequencies, percent energy, percent time. All of the variables available in the event wizard are available as variable names to be used in equations. The list continues for channel two. Uh, coherences are available, similarity, phase, other items. And there are other advanced topics which we'll get to later on where the events are able to see the values of other events, inhibits, enhances, mathematical functions, a wide variety of variables and functions are available. And you can make complex equations, if you like, involving the training variables. There's really no limit to what you can do mathematically in terms of creating new training variables. In addition, if you're using Z-score training, the optional advanced capability, you'll find that all of the Z-scores, which are advanced statistical computations, are also available through the event wizard. So this is a quick view of the data dictionary. We're going to close it for now. But basically this has shown how you would know that something very simple like x equals a minus 2.0 gives us the alpha amplitude minus 2 microvolts for an offset.